Well, and what a movie this was. Uh, no power outage this time, but definitely uh, we got rain. I made it home just in time before the rain. And this movie, uh, what a movie this was. Two and a half hours. Uh, so all these characters, we got Chris Pine. Uh, we got Michelle Rodriguez. We got Hugh Grant. Uh, who turns out to be the villain in this story. We got Sophia Lillis, Ahsoka. She plays Ahsoka Tano <laughs> with the horns. She's a, actually in this movie, she's a shapeshifter. So she shapeshifts to different animals. Uh, Justice Smith is a wizard in training because he gets this magic helmet. And this guy here, um, he's another, he's like a knight. There's different people. Uh, he does very little music playing. There's a, there's a scene where he plays... Uh, the loot, I guess it's called. But it's a distraction. It's basically the broken record scene, but it's done in magic, mystic magic. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez uh, has a boyfriend who's a small person, uh, not little person, but a um, kind of like what uh, Frodo and the, uh, like a hobbit kind of guy. And uh, we have to remember that this is the first fiction after Lord of the Rings and before Masters of the Universe. I think Masters of the Universe was like the third coming of like fantasy stuff, right? But Masters of the Universe dealt with uh, technology, right? And this is dealing with just magic. And I don't remember, let's see, Hugh Grant. So Hugh Grant's the, the villain. Hugh Grant just plays like this. So basically the movie starts out with Chris Pine, Michelle. Chris Pine tells his story to a council. So you got these blue creatures, blue dragon fat guys. You got different ethnicities, different races of people, and bird creatures, um, all kinds of all kinds of creatures, cat people, and I don't know that there's orcs and ogres, I'm sure, but I don't know much about the world of Dungeons and Dragons. So Chris Pine tells a story about uh, that he got married. And they had a child. <clears throat> the child, the daughter, is the focus of the quest, right? So Chris Pine has to go rescue his daughter, who's in the castle with Hugh Grant. Because Hugh Grant wants to do unspeakable acts with the daughter. Though we don't really see that. Or know about it. Because he's just a creepy old bastard. And uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, Brown. Remember that uh, when Hugh Grant was with Brown? I forgot her name. Anyway. Um... That was a long time ago, the 90s. So eventually he meets up with Michelle Rodriguez and Justice Smith. And they're all there's a moment where Justice Smith is trying to rip off. He does these stupid magic tricks, but he's trying to rip off, rip off people's jewelry. And the people revolt against him. And this funny moment where both Chris and Michelle Rodriguez ride these horses. And they just, they do it so casually. Like, oh, like they know he's going to land right on top of the horse. Because he's falling, he's falling off the roof and lands on the horse. It's like, there were some dumb moments. I think I was smiling the entire time this movie was going on. And here you got the other warrior. Uh, he's in the movie. He tells his story about how, uh, basically, this is like the Sith witch. This is basically like uh, Asajj Ventress right here. So if this is Ahsoka Tano, right, this is Asajj Ventress. And this, she's the final boss. Though I am confused, I think that I lose a couple. It loses a point for the fact that there's this main villain that we see in the background, and he's in the pro, like in the explanation, in the flashback. But they're like they're like the Sith, right? They're these people that raise the dead, the army of the undead, and they're demonic red bad guys. That's kind of how it is, right? So she's she's very she is a frightening force, but. It's basically her and Hugh Grant, but there was a there was a third person, kind of a Darth Plagueis ghost like character in the background, but I don't know if he died in the movie. It wasn't clear, because it would seem like maybe he, they were supposed to fight him, so it was unclear. There were so so many things, so many angles, and I just like the fact. I mean, it was four people against one. The May sequence was very cool. You have the gelatin of death, uh, and there was a cameo of of extras playing the 80s from the from the 1980s Supercade. I think it was called Supercade, CBS Supercade, in which you had Dungeons and Dragons. This was a Saturday morning cartoon. You had Donkey Kong, you had Donkey Kong Jr. 
and I think Frogger cartoons, but you also had Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. And that was in the early 80s. And at that time, Dungeons and Dragons was not even 10 years old yet. And they had done all these. That was a time where you had, you know, loving grandpa tell stories. And it was the early 80s when Reagan was just president for a couple of years. And you had these nice, quaint murder she wrote and the, the friendly creatures of the forest kind of stories. And that's what that's what D&D was on Saturday morning. So those exact characters are in the scene or, or in the the during the maze games and you have people gambling there's all kinds of things going on this is the maze there's ahsoka i i don't know what so what character sophia plays but she's playing a shapeshifter but uh there's her so the the women do mostly the fighting um i find it interesting that they do this uh he's learning he's he's fighting himself basically chris pine tells him you have this magic this golden helmet that you have to put on you put on the helmet and then you are able to, you know, basically you, you can control magic better, I guess, ultimate magic. He's able to, to use uh, different items to create portals, kind of like, um, what is it, portal of the game where you go through the portals and solve puzzles. It's what you think it is. There's a, there's a bag of gold, there's riches, there's treasure chests, there's fake treasure with the teeth and the tongue and all that. And Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant is just a thief in the whole movie. Now, Hugh Grant became the lord, the evil lord that lords over his people. But he takes Chris Pine's daughter, okay, the girl with the with the big hair and stuff. And uh, I don't know what the hell he wants her for. You, you can only imagine, right? Uh, Divine Brown. <laughs> That's her name, Divine Brown. Um, and... So, but the ultimate plan is to not stay a lord. He's going to take the riches and the money he makes from the maze games and then uh, run off with her and the money and not stick around. And then the, the Asajj Ventress, the woman at the, in the, at the top left, she has all the power to uh, uh, kill everybody and turn them into zombies. So this is like a, they're eating here. This is pretty interesting. He was in uh, Detective Pikachu. She was... Uh, Justice Smith was in Detective Pikachu and Sophia Lillis was Nancy Drew. I always thought she had that kind of face. Um, here's the maze again. This is the eating. Uh, this is the army of the undead. Once you Now, there's a, a scene where they're trying to get an item. Now, let me try to remember. Chris Pine's character was a harper, which is a, a spy who spies on people and reports back. This was part of his life. His wife was killed by the undead, but Chris Pine had stolen because understand that he went from being a a spy to a thief, and he had a code of con uh, he had to honor his oath as a spy as a harper. I guess that's part of the DND campaign. So he's doing all he, he's he steals a bar of gold when he's doing his job, and then the undead kill his wife. So the whole quest, besides finding his daughter, is to is to get this tablet to reawaken his wife. And of course, he doesn't do that. He reawakens Michelle Rodriguez. But uh, aside from that, um, this is the magic helmet. And this guy comes and goes. He does show up at the end to confront Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant's going to get it in the end, I guess. <clears throat> There's so many things going on. This is when they're eating... More of this scene. Uh, yeah, this is where they walk to find... Now, this is where we deal with the fat dragon. This is where we deal with the fat dragon. Uh, what is it? Chris Pye says, did he eat the other dragon? What happened? So much going on. It's an amazing... It's... I'm not sure if it's... I don't... I think Mario, the Super Mario movie, will probably do better than this. But I... And honestly, like, I don't have to commit to the D&D &D campaigns... Uh, there's so many versions of Dun Dungeons and Dragons now with Monopoly and maybe Clue Life. Um, I have Gloomhaven. I showed. I did a live stream earlier. I was going to talk. I talked about uh, Gloomhaven. That it's kind of it's like D and D, but you're not writing stuff down and you're using whatever die. Or actually, you're not even using a die. I think. I think you're doing it differently than using dice. But um, I mean, there's even a D and D campaign. Um, 
this is a stone dragon that appears that he turns comes to life and this is the uh treasure chest with the mouth that tries to eat uh michelle rodriguez's leg um yeah nine out of ten was not like okay yeah uh, yeah i i could imagine yeah so she's a shapeshifter she turns into a beetle a fly a worm a rat a cat a bird she does all kinds of stuff she spies on the bad guys uh, yeah, I really could see her as Ahsoka Tano. Like you could hear, you could hear Rosario Dawson's like narr narration. When I was young, I would fight in the Clone Wars, and this was me. I could really look at the horns. She's got the Ahsoka horns. Anyway, um, I'm just trying to remember all the stuff that happened. Now, there's a part in the movie that you might have seen in the previews where they have to talk to the dead people <clears throat> to get information. And you see all the people getting slaughtered in the in the back flashbacks, and there's a lot of horse riding, a lot of riding horses crossing the plains, um, and they have to answer, ask five questions. There was one guy that had one question left, and they let they leave him there, and I knew he was going to be at the end of the movie. Everybody left, so I watched this in 4DX. So we had. Movement. We had water coming down. We had, uh, you know, some spraying of water and fans going off when it was cold. When we went to the ice, uh, the ice realm, and all that stuff. And so many. Oh, look at these good things here. Um, yeah, that's the item that uh, Justice Smith uses to transport from one place to another. And every time he puts on the fucking helmet. Uh, these two dated. That's the store backstory between these two. These two dated. Um, what else have we got? I'm just looking at different things. Yeah, there's there's the uh, Jedi Jedi Master who uh, turned on uh, Yoda and all that. Turned on everyone. Uh, this is a great scene here. So he's a good fighter, a good swordsman. There's a lot of great fantasy elements. Um... I'm not sure if there are any, any more cameos that I could think of, but there are a lot of things that happen in two and a half hours. A lot of different posters. There's Justice Smith again. I have not watched. I have not watched Detective Pikachu. I'm wondering if that's worth watching. I have to figure that one out. I have to buy it on demand. Uh, Blockbuster Video is coming back, so we'll see. So Hugh Grant started out as a thief. And then he betrayed. So what had happened for Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez to get captured at the beginning of the movie was there was a time stopper uh, modification. And that time stopper stopped them so they would end up in prison by the guards. And they would get tossed in something like rural Pempe. But uh, they get there's a giant tower, like the Tower of London and the, and the ice. And so he wanted to, he, he had planned to escape on his own. He said he would come back for them. He never did. He told he lied to his daughter. And so, yeah, he was just a, uh, the not the real bad guy. The real bad person would be later on. But there was another guy, but you only saw him like in the flashback and when he talks to the villainous. That's the fat dragon. Did he eat the other dragon? Yeah, I remember all this stuff. I'm just looking back at all this. The tavern. Oh, that is amazing. This is an event. So they they transformed a tavern into D and D. But is it a real? I don't think it's a real tavern. There's all kinds of promotions Hasbro's doing, and that is the original movie. I never went to see this at all. So nine out of ten. I enjoyed it. I think you will too. Don't. Here's the thing. Don't take it too seriously. Don't get too wrapped up in the cliches. I think this is the one time all the cliches that you expect to see in the movie really work out in the best because it is, after all, a fun RPG to play. Uh, it, it might be if I could see how people do it so well. Uh, Gloomhaven is my thing. But I'm glad I got the poster and the little cloth map that you get when you when you go in there. I'm not sure if it's for early bird people or if you get it. I think you get it on the opening day. So maybe it's while supplies last. Um, if you like this video, if it's good enough for you, you see those icons below inside, you know what to do.